And this is the segment where I've got Heidi on one side, I've got Greg on the other side, and we are both going to be talking, or all three going to be talking, about how they're going to be collaborating, cooperating, working together, all those different things that you can eight together, <laughs> you know, you know, operate, collaborate. And so Heidi, tell us, you've got plans for expansion, but a while back, you served me that prickly pear margarita. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, how, that's what made me mention Greg to you on that particular broadcast. Tell me what other drinks you, tell me, tell us, tell everybody more about that and what else you've got planned for exotic Arizona drinks. Lots of fun things on the drink department. We're gonna do gardens um, throughout the whole property. So this whole property we're gonna add um, indigenous plants that we can muddle all of our drinks with. So lavender, sage, cactuses. So we're gonna do a lot of scratch. And what we're looking for is Arizona spirits to okay. use in our bar. Okay, and Arizona wines too. Right? Arizona wines, beers, ciders. Now Kenny, Kenny had told me earlier that you guys are looking to be Arizona foods as well and we'll, he and I will be talking a lot more about that but so I I mentioned to you Greg and Desert Cider House when you served me that marvelous folks this is a marvelous margarita I'm a whiskey drinker the only time I drink tequila is when I'm in you know, Mexico <laughs> but this was a marvelous margarita and now Greg Tell us what inspired you to create the recipe for Desert Zephyr with the prickly pear. Well, it was the same sort of thing that Heidi was doing. Was we were really trying to make something that spoke to um, you know the Southwest nature of our business. That's kind of also why we called it Desert Cider House. Was we wanted to sort of lend that feeling of the Southwest to our business. Um, uh, so really it was okay well you know we've made a regular cider a regular hard cider what are we going to do that sort of speaks to where we are that's special about the location that we're in and it was sort of a no-brainer to go with prickly pear um, we did a bunch of research and tried to chase down some prickly pear providers um, and found this a wonderful prickly pear juice out of Tucson um, and it just sort of it was an instant you know no-brainer thought that's that's the way to go for our next one so you actually you use two Arizona fruits absolutely or, or two fruits that are available in Arizona do you, right. use, do you use Arizona oranges as well um, we use orange uh, extract um, which is uh, yeah it, it, it's sort of a more concentrated way of doing it without adding the pulp and all into it we don't filter our ciders so um, all of our ciders are natural and every once in a while you'll see a, a slight haze to it that tells you that you know there's nothing special added to it we don't do any weird filtering or anything for it so for us to do um, orange in it an extract was the best way to go we use 100 percent natural extract um, to to add that orange note into it okay that's that's actually kind of perfect because you know, of course, I like orange extract simply because it's, you know, mostly alcohol. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but your desert cider, right, mm -hmm. it's, what, 6% alcohol? Yes, all our ciders are 6%, uh, uh, except for our desert dragon, that's a 6.9% alcohol. So um, we started making the, <laughs> the, the recipe that we use for our desert dragon hard cider is the original recipe I made now, at home. So Heidi, you're going to be bringing Desert Cider House ciders in, right? We, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some here, and although we, we, you know, I don't normally go for having photographic and videographic evidence, we're going to be <laughs> doing a tasting here, and then, then when Kenny comes in the next segment, and he's talking about the food and bringing out the food that he's going to be, we're going to be tasting the food. He'll work on the pairings then because he's got particular foods, Arizona foods, that he wants to pair each one of these with. Yeah. Okay, so which one do you want to go with tasting first? That's the Zephyr. 
that's our desert zephyr. It's got that beautiful rosy hue to it that comes from the prickly pear. It's delicious. <laughs> that one's a little bit lighter on your palate. Um, I could just. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's try good. it. It's yeah. delicious. It's great for a sort of afternoon or you know uh, brunch on the patio sort of deal. Um, hey, yummy. Real clean finish. Oh, Christina, you wish you could have this, don't you? <laughs> it's, yeah. Scowling at you while you're looking. Oh! We don't want to waste any. That's no, alcohol abuse right we there. We definitely don't want to waste any. <laughs> right now, folks, as we drink the Desert Zephyr, we have a, Zephyr's coming we up. Have a slightly stronger Zephyr a coming breeze through up here. and wanting to blow things over. <laughs> so let's go with the Desert Dragon. Maybe we can heat things up and slow the wind down. So. <laughs> That one is our, our cran palm that she's trying right now. And that's blended with 100% cranberry and, and pomegranate juice. Uh, it's a straight apple hard cider. That's delicious. And we well, don't that's, add what, that's what makes ciders ciders, right? It's apple. Yes, they also have perry, which is made with pear juice. And we're looking to maybe release one of that here uh, in the new year. Um, but actually acquiring too. the... Oh, you've already tasted it. I know what they taste like. <laughs> don't don't I make care it. anymore. They're right. <laughs> Bring them over here. <laughs> yeah, that one is... That's it. Those are the three juices that we put in it. So it's apple juice, pomegranate, and uh, uh, cranberry. Well, it's funny. I was, I was thinking that, you know, confusing the, the whole process of making cider. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I knew that there was such a thing as mead and that it is made sort of by the same process right. but mead is honey yep rather than fruit and and there's sort of there's a lot of stringent stuff about creating ciders um, if you're going to make a cider uh, you can't label it a cider if you ferment other juices with it so it has to be apple or pear this one is this one is the desert dragon i believe she's trying right now um, that's our original hard cider it's got a little Delicious. bit more of an amber color to it because of the brown sugar and, that and we add. Some of that cloudiness you were mentioning, so we know it's real. Yeah, it doesn't typically. I mean, we let it sit for about a month, and so all of the the stuff settles <laughs> out of it. <laughs> it closed my eye. <laughs> oh my gosh! That Give one's it got back. A, that one's got a kick. <laughs> Give it yep. back. That one's got good. a kick. That's what, 6.9? That one's 6.9% alcohol. Yep. Okay. A lot of the ciders that are out on the market are 5 or 5.5%, five but that means that they've had to either water it down or add something else to it. But we live in the desert, folks. So we do it for real. And here, we use <laughs> real stuff. You know, put some hair on your chest. <laughs> so, I you're bring, you're, you're, I, this is cool. You're going to be bringing these in and serving these. And you're going to be providing these. Absolutely. Now, we're going to be talking a little bit later about an expansion that you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. and, well, let's get that done now. Okay. You're planning on expanding the patio and doing the garden and everything, right? You are planning on... Tell us about your plans. Well, we're in a little tiny facility, so we haven't been able to do a tasting room. We get a lot of questions about tasting room. Are we going to open that up? Um, we really would like to, but we just don't have the space. So we've uh, been working with the city of Chandler and some other people, uh, scouting out uh, new locations. We don't really want to move out of Chandler or too far away from where we are now, so um, we're, we're basically trying to double the size of our facility. That'll allow us to put in a tasting room um, we can expand the production that we do uh, when we do that and that'll allow us to also bring in a mobile canning unit um, and they'll be doing uh, regular canning runs of it so that'll expand where we can be there's a lot of bars out there that have a limited number of taps um, you so can if even go into grocery stores with absolutely that, right? that would be the the plan of action so a lot more bars a lot more you know corner stores and then uh, you'd be able to get it at your local grocery stores as well excellent that's that's very cool yeah so I, I gotta tell you folks I'm having such a great time here. <laughs> but then again, I usually do because I'm the, the executive producer, I'm the host. I get to, you know, take credit for all of this. <laughs> I also get to take the blame for it, you know, which comes with, you know, being the one to get the credit. <laughs> you, know, you can't have one side of the coin without the having the other side of the coin. But Heidi, we got Kenny coming up here in a couple minutes. Tell us about the food and the pairings that he wants to do with these. So Thank you for being on here, and thank you. I wanted this. This was a great little session here between you and Gregory. Gregory, I thank want to you. thank you for being part of this. I appreciate it.